Hello and welcome back from on top of the wall. My name is Mason Knopp and we're here with another Commander Power Hour. Let's spin to see what our stipulation is. Photo finish. No restrictions, but a 15 minute time decrease. My god. I normally finish with seconds to spare, so let's see how this one goes. Nothing complicated. Nothing complicated. Nothing complicated. Kestia the Cultivator? Okay. Alright. Uh let's let's see Kestia. Oh, Kestia. Yeah, the uh the only legendary creature with bestow, right? Yeah, this is the only one with bestow. And the only legendary nymph, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she's the only legendary nymph. So she's a 4-4, and whenever enchanted creature or enchanted creature you control enchantment creature you control attacks. Draw a card. So, Boggles. <laughs> I'm thinking Boggles. Oops, that's, that's not what I wanted to be. Don't worry about this list that you're seeing here. This is just a list of stipulations. You don't need to see anything. I, no, you don't need to see that either. Okay, uh, Castia the Cultivator. Okay, so we have Cassia the Cultivator, and I'm going to go ahead and start a quick timer. Zero. Perfect. And go. Okay, Cassia. Nope. Oh, we're going to put in uh, Kestia the Cultivator as the commander. Add in one of her. Add in... I think it was star. C-M-R. Uh, star. Oh, no. i got to put capital D in there. I'm running out of time. Oh, my God. That's okay. Just stop playing music. I'm not sure if you guys can actually hear, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys are, are capable of hearing, uh, with my microphone, what's, uh, going on in the next, uh, on the next screen. Uh, yeah, it might be something. Okay. Go and pop up something. Oh, God, I forgot. Can't, there's nothing with commander in it. Uh, it's command tower, not commander tower. Uh, forest. Forest. Plains, uh, and some islands. I'm gonna just start off with the full thing of, uh, basic lands right now. And adjust as I go as needed. Alright. Good. There is some cards there and I'm just gonna check out the bestow creatures so it would just be an easy uh, thing to check through so let's deal Archon uh, just flying in first strike I'm not I'm not particularly looking for just a big fatty so no Elon of countless battles actually does uh, add a lot of power and toughness onto things and does actually he does actually matter or she I'm not sure what it is but <laughs> It's uh, it's definitely a thing. It gets just plus one plus one for each creature, uh, each enchanted creature you control. Uh, and uh, each cre each uh, aura you control. Wait, hold on. Let me let me just read this real quick. Elon of countless battles and enchanted creature. Each get plus one plus one for each creature you control and each aura you control oh so each creature and each aura so it does it is a it is a payoff i like that face 
Uh, I think I'm going to look at totem armor after this. Uh, footer, step, Edelon, just unblockable. Just an unblockable 1-1 uh, one, one that draws me a card. <laughs> uh, seems good. Seems good with my commander. What if, what if uh, Invisible Stalker would draw you a card when it attacked? Hmm. My god, could you imagine? Now, Hypnotic Siren is actually uh, just 7 mana, steal a creature, and if that creature would die, uh, it becomes the, a 1-1 one, one flyer, which again can attack and draw you a card. So in the early game, you can play it and end up drawing a card for it. It's pretty sweet. Oh, yes. Um, that is Post Malone playing. Sweet, sweet. Gotta love Post Malone. Alright, what else what else do we have in here? Uh the double strip ghost blade Edelon. I'll take the ghost blade Edelon. You know, every time that I look at Ghost Blade Edelon, I see this like wispy thing falling behind it. And because it's slightly darker here, I almost for some reason think horse legs. I'm like, oh it's a centaur spirit. Oh, that'd be so great. And I'm like, oh wait, no, it's not. It's not. It's it's nothing. <laughs> it's nothing. It's just your it's just your high hopes. Just your high hopes. Check out Total Marmor. That was a mistake, but all right, whatever. I should have typed in armor. Oh, exchange control of Arvis Total uh, non land permanent. Oh, so it's a uh, fighting for control of things, forcing something into your opponent's hands. Yeah, no, I don't want that. Bora Umbra is just a uh, three three. Um, uh, total armor and actually bear umbra is actually pretty sweet it gives it plus two plus two and whenever this creature attacks untap all lands you control if you're not familiar with totem armor it uh it would it says that if the enchanted creature would be destroyed instead remove all damage from it and destroy this aura so it sort, sort of regenerates it in a way crab umbra um I think I'm going to put Cra Crab Umbra in here just because I might have a mana dork that ends up producing more than uh, three mana, just incidentally in this deck. And that would be pretty sweet to just just have something that goes infinite with mana all by itself. And if, with any draw, actually, I'll take Eel Umbra too, uh, because it's just two mana flash. It gives it plus one, plus one, and totem armor, so I can... Why are you increasing in volume? I guess the song just naturally increases in volume. Uh, yeah, and, it, and it's a flash totem armor aura. So you can actually just flash it in if your creature would die and save it. Uh, I'm not looking for the deer umbra. Felidar umbra? Uh, yeah, I, I think this is pretty sweet. You can move it around if, uh, if you'd like to protect another creature. Because you can attach it at instant speed to target creature you control. So you can move it around and the creature does get lifelink. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I don't think that we are a solemn deck. Thinking of four mana. Because our commander is four mana. Untap each enchanted permanent you control. Um, Astrid the Mask. I will actually stick Astrid the Mask in here. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it in. Um, it gives creatures... It gives a permanence totem armor, which is mm, pretty sweet. And it does uh, increase our enchantment count, and we can untap our enchanted lands. Which reminds me, I should play Utopia Sprawl. Utopia Sprawl. Oh, let's see. What else? Do oh, yeah. Uh, Frisian Tome, Tome, Totem. Three mana tap at a red two mana pool. I know I'm not flying it, but uh, oh, that's kind of interesting. It makes a uh four four giant with trample, and it can block an additional creature. It's a two headed giant. Oh, that's sweet. It's it's a two headed giant totem. That's kind of cool. All right, uh, Ingrid, uh, Umbra, first strike and all cable. Creature is able to block it. Do so. Now I'll take a hyena umbra instead. Uh, hi the the whole totem armor thing is actually 
pretty sweet. And I like playing with it. Mav Umbra, I not I don't think I'm looking for something quite like that. That's a little expensive. Oh, Octopus Umbra. It uh enchanted creature has base power and toughness eight eight and has whenever this creature attacks, you may tap target creature with power eight or less. Oh, for five mana, that's a lot. I'll take Snake Umbra before I take you. I'm going to take Snake Umbra first. I'll think about the Octopus Umbra. Octopus Umbra is going into the maybe section of this. Let's see what else oh yeah there's spider umbra which is kind of neat uh a lot of these boggle things are kind kind of interesting a tree folk umbra um i don't think equipping this is necessarily going to be great it's just gonna we're going to be equipping it mostly for the totem armor aspect uh i would i would rather just uh look elsewhere for different kinds of protection auras attached to permanents you control have totem armor Umbra Mystic. Umbra Mystic. Well, and I should probably just cut that. <laughs> Stick it uh, over on this side before. Oh, Weather Seed Totem. Three mana for, for a thing that tests for grain. Two, triple green, becomes a 5 3. Tree Folk, Trample. Put him to graveyard from play. If it was a creature, return this card to its owner's hand. Neat. I'm not going to use you, but neat. I am going to take a soul ring, though. <laughs> Gotta always have the the obligatory soul ring. No, no, dang it. <laughs> I clicked on the cooler card by mistake. I'm going to take Umber Mystic. I'm totally taking Umber Mystic. It's a neat creature. And that sort of protects itself in a way. Uh, I, I'm going to take a spectral armor. Corporal armor. What is it called? Uh, the one armor. I can't remember, but it's in the all the white green boggles decks. Draw a card. Um, for enchantment. Enchantment. Uh, Agathian Enchantress. Oh, Edelon of Blossoms is a sweet one. Edelon of Blossoms. You are going in. You are part of the draw engine that makes the deck run. Anytime you play an enchantment, uh, an enchantment that enters the battlefield under your control, you get to play, you get to draw a card. Which is pretty sweet. Agathian Enchantress is just a 0-1 shroud creature. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, draw a card. I'm totally going to take it. Got the Enchantress. And I'm going to just increase our force count by like five. Right off the bat. And Wild Growth is just a one green enchant or enchantment that says whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, it produces a green mana too. It's pretty cool. Uh, Enchantress's Presence. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take Enchantress's Presence. Enchantress's Presence is something neat. Oh, uh, Vermirif Enchantress. A 1, 2 for a green and a white. Whenever an enchantment is put into any graveyard from play, draw a card. Well, if we're losing a bunch of enchantments from play... That usually means that we're probably going to lose the game. But in that case, we would be drawing a ton of cards. It depends how many we're losing at once. Because remember, when you draw a card when they leave play, sometimes it can be a land that you're drawing back, and that is not uh, ideal to just cash in all of your cards for, uh, for land <laughs> and non-enchantment things when you're already planning on winning with them. By beating face. I'll take the 
uh, Mace Enchantress and the Seder Enchanter. Let's see, uh, Fin, the Sunlet. Oh, yeah, this is a sweet Basel creature. Whenever you cast your first enchantment spell each turn, draw a card. It gets plus one, plus one for each enchantment you control. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take this one. This is the other one. I used to love enchantments as an archetype. And phone in the next room. Shut up. Every time. <laughs> uh, I think Trevor's Charm actually might be interesting. I I'll take Bant Charm first. I'd prefer a Bant Charm. How much time do I have? I have 31 minutes. I'm totally going to make this. Ah, uh, Teferi, too bad you don't work with enchantments. That's that's unfortunate. You don't. You only let me cast my sorceries at instant speed. Does she have a... Is that a bat, squirrel, lemur thing? Look at that tail. <laughs> let me look at that tail. My god, that's adorable. <laughs> but horribly terrifying at the same time. It's... Is that like some kind of gremlin? It's got like a little gremlin curled up under her neck. Our Gothian enchantress has like a gremlin pet thing with her fancy magic water stick. Oh, jeez. All right, so I don't need that <laughs> anymore. Uh, I'm going to look up draw a card for auras. Did I misspell aura? Wow. I misspelled aura. That's okay. <laughs> Core Spirit Dancer, yes. Shram, yes. And, yeah, Core Spirit Dancer actually is a sweet boggle card. It gets plus two, plus two for each aura attached to it, so just a real big fatty. And I'm thinking that I'm going to go in a slightly different direction. Uh, I'm also going to take Sage's Reverence. I'm going to go with a slightly different direction. Uh than a lot of I would like to eventually go in a slightly different direction I don't think I have time thinking about the 45 minutes uh, with these sort of boggle decks where you put the enchantments on them over a period of time and whatever All right, um, for now we're just going to go with the typical the very typical uh, boggle setup and I'm going to put an actually ley line of sanctity Let out of sanctity. Whenever any player successfully cast an enchantment spell that targets fugitive dryad, um, oh, whenever it becomes the target of an aura spell, you may you may draw a card. Oh no, you draw a card. Forces you to. Uh, that's interesting. I think I have a lot of draw though. I don't think I need you quite right now. But I am going to look up auras that care about auras. And we're going to make sure that they're all legal in commander. And that they're in band colors. Oh, Aura Mancer is guys. Um, Enchanted land becomes indestructible. Can't be enchanted by other auras. I mean, I was reading uh, Aura Mancer's guys, and then I switched to Consecrated land. I am going to take Aura Mancer's guys. It's the one that gives plus two, plus two for each aura attached to it, and uh, has vigilance. vigilance. Yes. Perfect. That's interesting in blue to give something vigilance. Daybreak Coronet. I'll take that. And Flicker Form. Alright, Flicker Form. Uh, we're also going to take... Um, what's the one mana 1-1 one, one flyer? Uh... Sarah Ascendant, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm garbage. 
it's just a one one that has lifelink and it gains plus five plus five and flying if you have 30 or more life so play it turn one very rarely very rarely play turn play turn one nobody answers it you gain six life when you get to attack and keep nearly killing somebody because you can just repeatedly uh beat face super fast did i already put in flicker form i already put in flicker form I'm just going to save this deck real quick. Uh, Spectral Ward? Plus two, plus two. Production from all colors? Uh, yeah, I'll take that. I think that's a lot of auras. The beginning of your upkeep, return enchanted creature and all or is attached to that creature to its to their owner's hands. I don't think I want that. <laughs> Reset. I do not think that I want that. Now I'm gonna look at auras that just care about enchantment. Or just enchantment. You yeah, kids got to be very careful. Some of them, uh, like uh, ancestral mask, each other enchantment, not enchantments. So it will uh, be very clear about the wording on some of these cards. Ancestral mask. Uh, let's take ethereal armor. Quiet Despair actually might be neat. I don't think I want it particularly bad, but it's kind of neat. Steel Enchantment. Blue, blue. Enchant Enchantment. Gain control of Enchanted Enchantment. Seems legit. <laughs> Seems legit. Oh, Ethereal Armor is already on here. Okay, that's all the payoff enchantments uh, for there. Um, uh, 24 minutes. I'm probably just going to look at uh, enchantments, uh, auras. That have to do with lands. This aura. Land. Auras that hit lands. Uh, abundant growth. Instantly looks good for fixing my mana. In a three color deck. Draws me a card to cycle itself. Seems legit. Annex, two blue blue, just take uh, enchanted land. You control enchanted land. <laughs> That's it. Whenever enchanted player is attacked, untap all non land permanents you control. Enchanted opponent, uh, each opponent attacking that player untaps all non land permanents he or she controls. Now, if only there was a way to utilize like all of this with like flash stuff. I think I might want a Vandillion, uh, no, Valdican, uh, something. It's not Vandillion click. It's been, uh, some kind of four mana artifact that gives all of your non land spells flash. I can't remember what it's, what exactly it, it is called. Dang. I'm going to put in Dawn's Reflection and, oh yeah, Fertile Ground. I'm going to use that to play that on some uh, cards. Oh, you know what? There's actually uh, Sarah's, Sarah's Sanctuary, which is a really old one. 
Sarah's. Sarah's Sanctum. I think this might be it. Uh, but there's Sanctum of Sarah and Sarah's Sanctum. Let's find out. Yep, it, that's it. Sarah's Sanctum. It adds one white mana to your mana pool for each enchantment you control. Not bad. Gift of Paradise. A little slow. Uh, Imprisoned in the Moon. And I'm also going to take that one uh, Song of the Dryad card. Add this. Add Imprisoned in the Moon. It's Song of the Dryad. It's uh, it, the green aura from the one of the commander sets that turns something into a forest. Song of the Dryads. Uh, Leaf Drake Roost, I don't want that. No, thank you. Market Festival. I don't, don't want a lot of four mana cards uh, because of my commander, but the idea of playing of not playing them seems like kind of a a big just like a big waste. I'm gonna take Nalea's presence. I'm also gonna take Arbor Elf because it can untap a forest, and if I'm if I'm playing uh, a lot of forest and I'm enchanting the forest, let's just go up to like nine forest. Uh, then I can untap the forest that's enchanted. And if there's like a few enchantments on there, they might not get hit, which is ideal. Overgrowth. So oh, there's Song of the Dryads. Nailed it. Squirrel Nest. Sunken Field. One in a blue enchanted land. Enchanted land has tap. Counter target spell unless its controller pays one. Hmm. <laughs> Force spike on a land. I wonder if you can like just get somebody with this. You can play it. Announce that, of course, that you that you have it. When like they try to read it or whatever, and then there's somebody forgets eventually, and you're just like, oh, gotcha. <laughs> or just like have an uh, an arbor elf on field, and they just see like, oh okay, he's tapped out. He he tapped the land. Yeah, it looks like I tapped the land. Tap. No. <laughs> Got him. Yeah, let's play Sunken Field. Let's play Sunken Field. Let's go back. Spreading Seas, um, yeah, I'll, I'll take Spreading Seas. It draws me a card, and there are plenty of uh, cards that give me benefit for just having an aura and playing the aura. It's like I could play it for two mana and then draw uh, two cards off of it, potentially, sometimes more. I don't want Squirrel's Nest. I don't, I don't care too much about tokens. Sheltered Airy, maybe. New Horizons. I will take New Horizons, though. It it does seem like it has upside. I can give something uh, a plus one, plus one counter. I'm just hoping that nobody is being smart and just like, yeah, mass enchantment removal. I got it. Keep to Paradise. I'm going to take another planes. Another four planes and another uh, two islands. And we're also going to take uh, that one white enchantment in standard. What is it? Uh, some kind of field. 
It's the one that uh, exiles target creature, target tapped creature, and opponent controls. As flash. Yeah, seal away. So we're going to put in one seal away. Yeah, target creature. All right. Um, maybe prison realm. realm. What well, it just scries. Uh, it's it's an, it's a worse, slightly worse oblivion ring, but it, it uh, scries. Exile target type creature. Uh, swords. Swords and yeah, swords flashers. Enlightened tutor. Can't forget. Can't believe I almost forgot. Enlightened tutor. Enlightened Tutor and Eternal Witness. Idyllic Tutor. Idyllic Tutor. Regular old Counterspell, maybe. Oh, what was the one card? Uh, Winds of Wrath. Winds of something. It destroys all the creatures that aren't enchanted. So all creatures that aren't enchanted. Yeah, Winds of Wrath. A one-sided Wrath spell. I'll take it. Uh, my creatures are too precious to risk Wrathing away. I'm also going to take Settle. So, Wreckage. There's Winds of Rebuke. Um... What else we got? Oh yeah, Winds of Abandon. Uh, one and a white exile target creature you don't control for each creature exile this way. Its controller searches his or searches their library for basic land card. Those players put those cards onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle their libraries. Overload. Oh, I think I like it. Yo, know, I think I like it. Now, where do I go? <laughs> uh, more Wrath Spells? More Wrath Spells seem good. Yep. Destroy. Let's try destroy each uh, in our colors. Oh, there's a Blast Zone. That's good for getting rid of a bunch of little stuff. I do not want to ban it progress. Each card is too valuable to be eaten by Bane of Progress. Corrosive Portal. Consigned to Dust. Divine Reckoning. Actually, we're not planning on having a ton of creatures, so Divine Reckoning uh, is actually pretty good. Each player chooses a creature he or she controls, destroy the rest, and has flashbacks. So we can actually have a couple of creatures on the battlefield, particularly like our commander or something that's really strong. We play our commander... And maybe we have a mana dork or something left uh, out there, and they're there. Uh, they might have a board with more creatures on the battlefield. We play Divine Reckoning, destroy uh, pretty much uh, everybody's creatures except for ones that probably can't stand up to ours. So they have fewer blockers, and we'll be forced to chump with something really good. Hopefully, not bad. Engineered Explosives. Fall of the Thran. <laughs> Playing Fall of the Thran seems very cruel, but I will totally take Fall of the Thran. Oh, that's a sweet promo. Oh, wait. Hold on. No, that's not black and white. I was thinking that it was black and white or there's something particularly uh, neat about it, but it's just a foil uh, pre-release card. We'll take Fall of the Thran. Uh, it's just a card that sort of seals the game away for us. 
because when we play play like a really strong creature and we have uh board superiority then we blow up all the lands the entire time we're swinging really hard at people forcing them to chump with the few creatures that they have the entire time uh there's like no lands for there's not a lot uh there's not enough lands for them to do anything about it No, nothing that destroys all the enchantments. Sapling Burst. Four and a green. Enchantment fading seven. Remove a fade counter from Sapling Burst. Put a one on green sapling token on the battlefield. It has this creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of fade counters on Sapling Burst. Sapling Burst leaves the battlefield. Destroy it. All tokens put on the battlefield with Sapling Burst that can't re be regenerated. No, <laughs> I don't think I want that. Tannic Eruption, no, don't care too enough, too much about mountains. There's no mountains that I care enough about. Uh, no. I don't want, uh, leave no trace. Destroy each enchantment and each other enchantment that share the color with it. That might hit a lot of ours sometimes. So I think we just pre would prefer some strong cards like uh, Crows and Grip. I just stick in a Crows and Grip. Oh, Crows and Grip. My mistake. Crows and Grip. Uh, so close. Now we're just going to type in add. Uh, creature. Creatures and Bant. Well, it's Alter Ego. The Slumbering Isle. Oh, yeah. The creature that's a land at first. Neat. Avid Reclaimer, Xpin Guardian, uh, something of Avacyn. I think I'll take a Bird of Paradise. Bird of Paradise. We're going to save just so I can check out how many lands that we have. Spawn up. Spore Blood. Theranax. Uh, Bloom Tender. We are in the market for a Bloom Tender. Is there anything else in here? Chance of the Tangles. Neat. But no, I'm not doing a super fast start. 90% of the time. But it's Druids. Neat. Drum Hunter. Nah. All you elves are cute. All right, we got 31 enchantments. That's plenty of enchantments. Uh, we have a bunch of creatures. Some of them are actually enchantments. So we have what's looking to be more like 30, 30, uh, six enchantments. I think we have plenty. We have a bunch of lands. I'm gonna edit. Uh, stick in more lands. Either sworn canist. Oh, maybe we should look at the enchantment gods. Bloom tender. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot of potential in the gods, uh, in this deck, but I am, I am thinking that it would be kind of neat to like see if there might be just one or something. Geyer engineer. Do I need? A card like ink no uh not incubation droid. I'm thinking about uh the duels that I'm gonna need and want. Uh seven minutes. Incubation droid? Yeah, I don't I don't think I have time to be picky. Plus it's a, a mana sink if we're on a 
stalled board state. We can pop five mana into it. It's better than uh, nothing. Uh, Kenny Lee, Chosen of Crufix. Lotus Cobra is neat. Sliver, something or other. Prime Answer? Oh. Nope. Uh, I don't have enough creatures for that to matter. I don't think. Uh, I will take Noble, Noble Hierarch. Noble Hierarch. Yes, you are, you are mine. Oracle Muli Dooley, you're at four mana. I don't want you in that spot. Something Battlement. Plague Mirror. <laughs> Plague Mirror. Grixen Metamorph. Oh, there's the Renegade. Uh, no. Taylor Means. No. Oh, wait. Hold on. What's that? Oh, yeah, I'll take the Imposter, actually. Um, having a second copy of my commander swinging with a couple of enchantment creatures seems pretty sweet. The Imposter. And actually, I should check Exalted. Oh, five minutes left. No. A little bit more than five minutes, but yep, no. Um, I'm just going to look for God. Look at the gods real quick. Cometro. Go to the harvest. Uh, I don't plan. Not playing that many creatures. I will take Crufix. So that way we can save all the mana. Nalea, Ronas, the Undomitable, Thassa, Thassa, yeah, that's my girl, Thassa. Yes, <laughs> she was super sweet in. Uh, and every actually not in her time in standard. She's super sweet outside of standard. Heliod. Actually, having, yeah, I'm a sucker for gods. Yeah, I'll take Heliod, and I'm I'm running out of time. So Heliod, you, let's let's see what you got. <laughs> let's see what you got, dog. Uh, Farah, no, I don't want you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And I'm going to take a hollowed fountain. Hollowed fountain. Save, continue editing. Let's just look up land. In, uh, start filling out the mana base with our three minutes remaining. Temple garden. Yeah, Temple Garden. Seems great. Oh, I forgot the one card. Uh, we're going to play uh, Alchemist Refuge and Arcane uh, Lighthouse. Alchemist Refuge, Arcane Lighthouse. Ugh. Uh, Arch of Ascada? No, I don't want that. How about Strip Mine? Just good old Strip Mine. Strip Mine. Vidalcan Ori's. What it was? It it was Vidalcan Ori's. Yeah. Dalkin. Oh shit. I mean, nope. You didn't. You didn't hear nothing. 
Vidalkin, uh, Ori. Yeah, that's it. That's the card. Vidalkin, Ori. Blood of Woodland. Just a new way to get more lands out. And I, I'm not particularly looking for lands that I can uh, sacrifice very quickly. Uh, breeding pool. Oh, yeah. And um, there is the Bountiful Permanent. It's one of the uh, cards, one of the cycles of lands that come into play tapped based on the number of opponents you have. Bountiful Promenade. Nice, nice, nice. Do I want Celestial Colonnade? Uh, it can sort of hide itself in a way. I'll take Command Beacon. Oh, I will definitely take the Celestial Colonnade. How many how many cards do I have? Uh, please tell me I have more cards than I think I do. Ah, oh, I have three. Uh, Elvish, Mystic. We'll put in the Elvish Mystic. We'll put in. Uh, we'll put in a lot of stuff. I'm going to put in Exotic Orchard, Field of Rune. Ah, uh, don't run out of time. And I'm just going to finish off a couple fours. There we go. Ah. Uh, I think I'm like three cards short. Ah, uh, don't kill. Uh, I wish I had more uh, time to choose like some counters or something. Oh well, I got Vidalcan Ori in there. I'm just gonna add like another island and another forest, and one more plant. <laughs> God. 15 minutes less is like a lot harder. <laughs> you have to pretty much feel like you're adding a card every uh, 10 seconds, it feels like. My God, I know so many cards off the top of my head. <laughs> and I'm familiar with a lot of cards and a lot of different decks. I don't think I ever found a creature that was going to end up tapping for more than three mana at a time, so Crab Umbra didn't uh, work out. Oh, no Crab Umbra. That's the dire different direction that I was talking about, thinking about going in. Oh, well. Uh, let's see. How many cards did I actually end up with? Yeah, I um, I basically just added a couple more basic lands at the uh, last second. Up to 100 cards. Uh, now we're, like, short on land. Oh, well. But what's neat is we actually got uh, three Wrath Spells that are one-sided in our deck. Which is kind of cool to have. And I'm glad that I found time to build around uh, enchantments and stuff. And actually, let me just... Uh, <laughs> no, not edit. <laughs> I actually wanted to just draw a quick hand because uh, this this deck was built so fast. Let's play test. And of course, um, because of the way that this thing shuffles, you have to... Uh, shuffle up like at least three times before actually starting a game no matter how good the hand looks because for some reason in this randomized pile it doesn't actually put them together very well and you end up with a uh I i'm gonna start with this hand you end up with like some very bad uh some very good looking hands that turn out really really bad because you just repeatedly draw a ton of non-land or just a ton of lands and it comes out very clumpy the first time turn two Oh, strip mine into Nalea's presence on. Actually, no, no, no strip mine. 
Uh, let's let's play basic planes with that Nevelaya's presence. We get the draw card because it enters next turn. And our next card would have been Mesa Enchantress. Turn after. Green pool untapped or... Hmm. I'm thinking that what we would probably end up doing is playing Breeding Pool Untapped, play uh, Felidar Umbra on Mesa Enchantress, probably get on at the one person who doesn't have anything going on, and then tap tap holding up Silhoué or Eel Umbra. Which is pretty cool. So yeah, I, I think I'd uh, prefer that. Yep, so then afterwards we can play a Cruffix. Very strong a magic card. So let's just draw another card. And actually get in with Mason Chantress. It would be a 2-4. And we have Ideal Tutor. And the land's always turning like this huge pile. <laughs> this terribly huge pile. Just garbage. Afterwards, we would play... I'm thinking Gift of Paradise on this. Gaining a couple life. Tap, tap. Play Ideal Tutor. Search for an enchantment card. Reveal. Uh, what would we reveal, actually, searching through this deck? Elon of Countless Battles is pretty neat. Plowshares. You know, we'd probably want a card that actually uh, plays us, pl uh, allows us to draw cards for playing enchantments. So, a not flicker form. We don't have enough to protect, uh, enough to bother protecting this thing. Argothian Enchantress. And actually, we were supposed to draw a card off of that uh, Gift of Paradise, but you know what? Whatever. We missed out. Where is that Bloom Tender? Uh, Enchantress's Presence. Move to hand. Oh, well, that's cool. And now we're going to lead with Enchantress's Presence. And because that was cast we get to draw a card and actually uh now let's let's get crazy here <laughs> let's get a little little nuts let's go ahead and play uh curse of bounty and draw two cards and you know i think we haven't played a land yet for turn so let's play that land and let's try to play uh oh no do we have another thing oh well oh well <laughs> dang that's it. We would probably end up just floating mana if we didn't get the chance to seal away something and draw two more. All right, playing land. Proceeding to... I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where to go from here, but it'd probably end up with uh, us just doing really well in this game, thinking about it. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, Cruffix turned on into a seven, four <laughs> indestructible creature. Seems good. <laughs> there is also Winds of Wrath. Yeah, we could have actually Winds of Wrath. So the deck does have some uh, playability. Yeah, it would have been just a quick second there with us just drawing mana. Estrid the Mast. Uh, I think we need a way to either have both uh, the draw engine and a way to consistently have the unmasked one so that way we can untap utilize all of the mana and then like use all the mana draw and go off from there because i don't think that uh it's worth it to just have either one or the other at a time if you've seen a lot of infinite combos uh or played a lot of infinite combo decks you can see that people will try to go off with all of their cards but they don't have the mana to do anything with all of those cards or they try to have all the mana in the world but they don't necessarily have a way to use all of that mana so it doesn't matter unless you have fireball and can or comet storm to instantly kill somebody it doesn't doesn't do anything you need like a mana sink something cool maybe float it into graphics 
and then look at it. <laughs> just on just represented by two two dice. <laughs> just tons of mana. Well, anyway, that was that was a neat one. New hand, let's do a colonnade. Oh well we start with that. I would start out tapped. And actually we would draw first then uh Claire the Enchantress. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Coming in for that face touch. I'll see you in the next video.